Now when developing these APIs with Django REST framework, or really with any tool, we should try and make sure that our database queries are as optimized as possible, and that's gonna result in better performance for our API. Now there's ways of doing this in your database. For example, you can join up data to avoid the N plus one problem as it's called, or just use things like database indexes to make certain queries as efficient as possible. So in this video, we're gonna look at what we have here, what we've built so far in this series, and we're gonna add some database optimization using the Django Silk package. Now I did a previous video on database optimization and we used Django debug toolbar in that video. You might want to check that out if you want to learn more about this topic, but in this video I want to explore a different tool, and that's the Django Silk package. Now this package has 4,500 stars on GitHub, and it provides silky smooth profiling for Django, so that sounds good. Let's get down to the readme and we're going to learn more about this. Now Django Silk is a live profiling and inspection tool for Django, and it intercepts and stores HTTP requests and database queries before presenting them to the user for further inspection. So that is very useful in development because we want to see where any potential bottlenecks lie when we're querying our API. So what we're gonna do is install Django Silk and we're gonna use it to analyze the SQL queries and the requests that we're sending to this REST framework API. Let's go to the installation section and you can see it's installable using pip. So we're gonna go back to VS Code and in the terminal here, I have the virtual environment open. I'm gonna add a pip install command and we're gonna install Django Silk into the virtual environment. Now, once that's installed, what we can do is go back to the readme section and we're going to add these to the settings. First of all, we need to add a middleware and that's the silky middleware. And then we just need to add silk to installed apps. So let's go back to our Django project and we're going to load up settings.py. And once we're in settings.py, we're gonna start with installed apps. At the bottom here, I'm gonna add silk to installed apps. And then we're gonna to go to the middleware section. And if we go back to the documentation, I'm gonna copy this middleware, the silky middleware. And we're gonna go back here and I'm gonna add that at the end. Now there are some notes on the readme about placement in the middleware. That middleware list in Django is actually an ordered list. It contains different middlewares and each middleware is processed before passing the request onto the next one. So depending on what your middleware is trying to do, it might be optimal to put it before certain other middleware. Now you can read this section here, but it's important that if you're using the gzip middleware that you place that before the silky middleware, otherwise you're going to get an encoding error. Now once we've added this to installed apps and to middleware, we are going to amend the URL patterns in our application. So what I'm gonna do is copy this path here, that's in the list. I'm gonna copy that and let's go back to our project. And I'm gonna bring back the sidebar here and minimize everything. We're gonna to go to the projects urls.py file. And what I'm gonna do here is just paste that path in. And the path here is to the silk endpoint. And for that path, we're going to include the URLs that are part of the Django Silk package, and we're giving that a namespace of Silk as well. So that's gonna add some URLs to the project that's going to allow us to view Django Silk. So if we look at this interface that we have here on the readme, the URL that we've added is basically to allow us to view this interface. So we've now set up the Django Silk project. If we go down here, we can now run migrate. So I'm gonna go back to the terminal and let's make this bigger here and we're gonna clear it out and paste in that migrates command. And then that's going to add some tables based on the Django Silk package and the models that are provided by that package. Now we're ready to start the Django development server. So let's run the server at the bottom and we're gonna go back to the browser here. And as it says on the documentation, Silk will automatically begin interception of requests and you can proceed to add profiling if required and you can reach that user interface at the endpoint we added slash silk. So that's the path that we're gonna use here. So let's go to localhost 8000 slash silk and we're gonna view that interface. So we're now on the Django Silk interface and you can see the summary page that we have here and that's gonna give you some summary statistics across your website when you're running this in development. We're gonna to go to the requests tab here and this is going to track the requests that are coming into your application in development here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a request to localhost 8000 slash products, and that was the endpoint that returned all of the products that we have in the API. So I'm gonna add a new tab on the browser and we're gonna to go to that endpoint. And we've done that now and we've got back the list of products here. So let's go back to the Django Silk interface and when we refresh this page, you can see that we have some different requests that have been added. And this is the one I'm gonna look at, the slash products endpoint. And this looks all good. We've performed a single database query to get all of the products. And we can click the 
card that we have here for this request to get more information. So the request took 138 milliseconds. It used one database query. And if we go down here, we get some data on the request and response headers as well as the response body. And it also gives us some nice curl commands that we can use and some Django test client code that we can also use for testing. Now what we can do is go to the SQL tab and that's going to give us back the actual query that was performed at this endpoint. And that can be a single query like this, but it could also be multiple queries depending on what your view is doing. And we can click through to that and we can see the SQL query that was used to retrieve the products that were returning in this API here at the slash products endpoint. Now the slash products endpoint, this is quite good because it's performing only one database query and it's returning the results very quickly, 138 milliseconds to get all of those products from the database. Let's go back to our project and we're going to go to views.py. This product list endpoint, you can see the database or the Django ORM query that's being performed here, product.objects.all. And that's all good, but we're going to see a problem when we go to the other list page and that's for the orders. Now what I'm going to do is go back to the browser and let's go to our API and instead of slash products, we're going to use slash orders and we get back the results here. And you can see, for example, that nested data that we looked at a couple of videos ago. So we're getting back the results here and we can go back to Django Silk. And what I'm going to do is go back to the request summary and you can see the orders endpoint here. And you can see on the card that this is performing 19 queries and that's in orange here, which indicates to us that there could be something that could be optimized here. Now, if we click through to this, we can get some more details on the request itself. But if we go to the SQL tab, you can see the queries that are being executed. And if we go to the bottom here, we get the initial query that was used to get the orders from the database. So this is a select query. It gets all of the orders from the database. And then if we go back there for each order, we're getting the set of order items. So you can see it's querying the order item table and it's got a where clause here where it's checking that the order ID is equal to the ID of that parent order. But the problem is that it's making a query for each order item that belongs to the order. So let's say one order has five order items. That's going to result in six database queries for that order. And imagine you had thousands of orders that you're returning here. That's going to result in a lot of database queries. So there is a performance optimization that we can make here to make this better. So let's go back to the view here and you can see where we're fetching all of the orders. And then we create the serializer and pass that query set of orders in there. And that query set of orders contains that nested serializer that gets the order items and that's where these additional queries are being performed. But what we can actually do with the order model is we can prefetch the related order items. And by doing that prefetching, we're going to perform a single additional query to get all of the order items for that set of orders rather than one per order item for every single order. So what we can do is use a function called prefetch related in Django. So I'm going to add that just now, prefetch related. And what we are actually going to prefetch here is the items. So what is this statement here? What is the items? If we go back to models.py and we go down to our order model, you can see that the order has a set of products. But if we look at the order items, you can see how we relate the order itself to the order items through this related name of items. So when we have an order and we want to get all of the order items, we can use the related name of items. And that's what we're doing here. We're prefetching those related items. So we're going to see if this reduces our number of database queries. So let's go back to Django Silk and I'm going to go back to the request tab here. So let's go back to this page and I'm going to add a new request to this endpoint now that we've got prefetch related. And if we refresh this page, you can see 19 queries was for the initial page of orders. And now we've reduced that to eight queries and we've also reduced the time taken from 92 to 74 milliseconds. And if we look at this, we can go to the SQL tab and we can see that we're fetching the orders, but this time after we get the orders, we're doing another single query to get all of the order items. And you can see that grouping here where the order ID is in a set of order IDs. And that's going to give us back all of the order items that have an order in the database. So we can get all of those order items in a single SQL query. And that's going to greatly reduce the number of queries as you have a growing number of order items in your database. But you can see we have another set of queries here for products. And the reason for this is that each order item has a foreign key to the product. So let's go back to models.py and order items you can see has a foreign key to get the parent product for that order item. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to look at the views.py code 
and we're going to add another call or another argument, sorry, to the prefetch related function. So what I'm going to do is break this into a new line here and we're going to add a second argument. So as well as the items, we can also get the product associated with each item and we're going to prefetch that in this query here. So when we do that, we can save this and let's go back to our Django Silk request page. We're going to go back here and we're going to go back to the order list and refresh this. And then when we refresh this page, you can see we've reduced that to three queries and we've reduced the time from 92 milliseconds originally down to 58 milliseconds. And of course, the more orders that you have in the database and the more order items, the more these performance improvements are important. So all we've done here in the prefetch related call is we've added the prefetch for the items associated with the order, but we're also following the foreign key from the item itself through to the product model, and that's what we're prefetching here. Now we can actually remove the items here because when we prefetch items and the associated product, that's all we really need to add here. That's automatically also going to prefetch the items. So let's save this and go back to our request page. And again, I'm going to send a request to the orders endpoint. And when we refresh this, you can see we get the same three queries being sent and the same ballpark for the milliseconds as well. And one final thing we can do here with prefetch related is we can actually just get rid of the dot all call at the end of this. So what I'm going to do is move this to a single line. And if we want to fetch all of the orders from the database, we don't actually need to chain dot all onto prefetch related. We can just use this query. And again, if we go back to the orders endpoint, when we refresh this and go back to our Django Silk page, again, we're getting the same result. So the big benefit here is that we're prefetching the related items associated with the order from the database when we go to the slash orders endpoint. And for this nested data, that's going to be important because we can prefetch that in a greatly reduced number of SQL queries, as you can see here. We've reduced that from 19 down to 3. And we've also reduced the time taken down from roughly 92 to around 57 to 72 milliseconds. So that's the benefit of adding these optimizations on the database queries that you perform using the Django ORM. This can result in greater performance for your API and that's going to result in happier clients. They're going to make requests and they're going to get back the data that they need much more performantly, much more efficiently, and they're going to be happier and they might even pay you some more money. So that's brilliant and that's going to be all for this video. Thanks very much for watching. And if you've enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to support the channel, check out our coffee page that's in the description. And in the next video, we're going to move on to generic views in Django REST framework. And we're going to move from function-based views to class-based views. So that's coming up. And thanks again, guys, for watching.